What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Draft Busters podcast here on Vendetta Sports Media. I'm your host, Jeremy Rinaldi, and today I'm alongside Matt Robertshaw. Matt, how's it going? It's going all right. A uh, little, little burned by the national championship game, but uh, persevere with Chris Olave coming back next year. That's right. That was some big news. I was very, I was very surprised. So today, here on the podcast, we got for you guys a 2021 first round NFL mock draft. Be sure to check out our last episode where Trey and I interviewed 2021 NFL draft prospect and linebacker for UAB, Jordan Smith. That was a great interview, great episode. So be sure to check that one out. But right now we're just going to run through a little mock draft. We're going to alternate the picks. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I got the first pick. I'm on the clock with Jacksonville. No brainer here. We got Trevor Lawrence. People are going to overthink this, but the Jags definitely won't. Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback in the draft. He's the best prospect in the class. I don't want to hear about how easy their offensive schemes are, whatever. Lawrence is the best player in the class. Jags are going Lawrence. All right. Um, yeah, and I agree. And, and Daryl Bevel will have um, – the uh, he'll be spoiled because he'll go from uh, Russ to Stafford and then to uh, – uh, Lawrence. Um, so I, I'm on the clock with number two with Jets. Uh, I thought about this a lot. I like Fields a lot personally, but the way the Jets are set up, I think he's going to need to make more off, off platform throws, make things happen for himself. And I actually think that Zach Wilson slots in there uh, for himself. From what I was seeing, he was a fairly efficient, he ran his offense fairly efficiently. Uh, I still think they're going to need weapons, but Joe Douglas has not made a huge priority of uh, wide receivers. So I think in reality that they trade back, but if they're in this position with Zach Wilson, and Justin Fields, they'd have to take one of them and see what they can do either for a trade for Deshaun, which not sure what that would look like. Maybe the two, a pick and Sam Darnold. Uh, in reality, I think they'll trade back, but in this scenario, I think Zach Wilson will be uh, uh, a good fit. So there you go. There's our first um, bombshell pick here on the Vendetta mock draft. Zach Wilson over Justin Fields at two. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. And you never know how things will shake up, especially if teams value Wilson before Fields, then that's how it's going to go. I, I like him personally more. Uh, I like Fields personally more. Uh, it may be a bias for me, but I just think if, uh, the way that the Jets are set up right now in their offensive line and the way that they're going to need – things to ha have happen on offense. I think Zach Wilson fits that a little bit more right now rather than Fields because Fields is better in structure. Uh, he's good outside, but Wilson is just uh, better. Right. All right, so I got the third pick here, Miami Dolphins. They swung this pick from the deal with Houston. Now, this is an interesting spot for them. I'm a Dolphins fan. I'd like a trade down here personally. Yeah. Just more assets. I don't see the need for taking a wide receiver at three overall. I will. I see the need, but I don't see how that's going to work out. If you take a receiver at three, and this is something me and Trey have talked about. If you take a receiver at three, you're banking on them being a hall of famer. So for that reason, I'm going to go with Penny Sewell, left tackle. We can slide Austin Jackson over to right tackle, slide in Robert Hunt or kick him inside the right guard, which is, which, which is his natural place. In college, yep. Yeah, you were you were hope you were hoping, and I hope it happens that Carolina calls a trade up in front of Atlanta to get a Justin Fields or um, Zach Wilson, whoever is left at three. But yeah, I'd love to trade down. Yeah, like like you said, what is Car Carolina's at eight? We get that eighth pick. I'm fine with three. the there. Yeah, yeah, because then you're still going to get a Chase Waddle. You're going to get something there. Yeah. Three is just too high for me to take a receiver, though. So we're going Sewell, blue chip left tackle. We're hoping he could be a perennial all pro. And all Bengal fans cry. Um, so I'm on the clock at four with the Falcons. Um, the Falcons are in a weird situation because they can take these um, – they can take Justin Field. And I actually I think it would look really well – this is a part where Zach Wilson actually fits Arthur Smith's offense a little bit better. Um, I, I believe so in the run game play action. I think he fits a little bit better. 
But Art Smith's also very smart. He's going to make any quarterback look good. Um, if you make Ryan Tannehill look as good as he did, I think he, I have confidence he'd make any quarterback uh, look above their pay grade. So this comes to Justin Fields or the, the field, essentially. And I think people like Rick Rousseau, Farley, Parsons. Parsons is the only really – key player in this whose talent wise comes up to top five, but it's still a linebacker and a linebacker can only do so much. I mean, Bobby Wagner did, uh, is on the defense of the Seattle Seahawks and he only could do so much to elevate the rest of the defense. So in this case, I'm going to go Justin Fields, um, sit behind because having a time to sit behind Matt Ryan, get acclimated to the offense, get acclimated to Calvin Ridley, um, and hopefully get a running back in the second or third round for them. So Justin Fields at um, four. All right. So now I'm on the clock here with Cincinnati. This is probably the first tough spot a team's been in so far. Cincinnati wants offensive line, but there's no great offensive tackle prospect. And you could say wide receivers need, but again, I still think this is a little too early. The thing about – the NFL draft is offensive tackles always end up sliding up the draft boards in about February to March. So usually what happens is everyone thinks there's one offensive tackle prospect who's like the top guy. And then just a couple of late first rounders, but by draft time, it's, it always seems like, you know, there's four or five that go by pick 20. And so for that reason, I'm going to give Cincinnati my, my OT2, which is Christian Derisaw from Virginia Tech. And no one's mocking him this high right now, but in my opinion, he's another great offensive tackle. He's been great for Virginia Tech. So in my opinion, Cincinnati should take this one here. Again, this wouldn't be a terrible spot for them to trade down, but I think if you're looking for receiver over tackle, I think Derisaw eventually is going to be thought of as a top 10 guy. And I think this would be the spot for him. So Cincinnati's going to get their left tackle and Christian Derrissaw. Gotcha. And I think it, it will be up to conversation for him and Slater because Slater is getting a lot of buzz right now, even after opting out um, just on tape study, uh, yeah. unless you're someone who thinks that they play in a conference championship game. Yeah. And Slater's a guy who but, I really like. And, well. and Sl Slater is currently on that rise. Derisaw used this year to get that rise. So he's chipping away uh, so he can get some top 10 talk. Absolutely. Slater's getting top 10 talk right now. And it goes with people having those needs and also the talents there this year. It's a good, it's a solid OT class. I'm not sure about the high end talent from last year, but it's comparable. It's not like it's uh, a couple of years back when it was like Connor Williams and everyone else or anything. Um, but the thing for me is, yeah, you can get a you can get a decent offensive tackle on day two, but yeah. you can get a great receiver on day two. So that's yeah. why I would lean offensive tackle before receivers, especially yeah. in the high end first round. It's that possibility of like you can get a Rondale Moore or a right. uh, Amon Ross St. Brown versus a perhaps Sam Cosme or something like that, you, right. you, or a Vera Tucker. All right, so I'm on the clock at six. Um, with the hire of – oh, my God, I just forgot his name. Um, this Colts offensive coordinator, now head coach for the um, – sorry, excuse me. Uh, Nick Sirianni. Nick okay. Sirianni, new uh, head coach for Philadelphia. The owners were very clear that they wanted to fix Carson Wentz. I – don't know what happened to that man. He is a broken man. He was throwing uh, passes hit. He has the ability to make. He just was not making them anymore. But for what I actually think is going to happen, I think they're going to stick with Carson Wentz. Uh, and everyone will cry at that. And Or at least just roll with uh, Jalen Hurts. They have too much invested at the quarterback position. So in that case, this comes to discussion of do you want to help out Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts with a Jamar Chase, a Devonta Smith. Personally, um, I love the versatility on defense of Micah Parsons, and I think Micah Parsons is a good uh, gap filler. Anytime you have issues on your defense, he's going to help as either a um, blitzing backer coverage. I think he's 
an overall fix it player. So I'm going to give them Micah Parsons at six. And I know that's high for a linebacker. Micah Parsons is a special player. All right. So now I got Detroit on the clock at pick seven. So here I'd probably make the case for the first receiver off the board as linebackers a need for them. One just went off the board. Offensive line, you could say. But, I mean, we've already taken two tackles so far. The team is just a mess right now. So for Detroit, they got Galladay, who's going to be a free agent. But I'd be shocked if he left. I'd be shocked if they let Galladay walk. Um, Marvin Jones will be a free agent as well. He could walk because he's getting older and they probably don't have a real need for him on the future of the team. And so based on Galladay's play style, I'm actually going to give them Devontae Smith here over Jamar Chase and even over Jalen Waddell. Smith is just so shifty and he's a great route runner. He's got great hands, a bit of a smaller frame. So he could be a slot guy, whereas Chase is more of the 50, 50 jump ball kind of deep threat. Whereas Smith is like the middle of the field guy. So I'm going to give them Devontae Smith for that reason. Cause I think if they take chase, they're taking a guy whose ceiling is probably a little bit better than Galladay. I'm very high on Kenny Galladay. So if yeah, I like, Gall- I like Galladay uh, a lot as well. So I'm going to give them Devonte Smith. I think that'd be, that'd be a scary offense to face. Well, Stafford's people who keep on underrating Stafford's arm strength. Um, and he or Waddle, however they play it, but, we have seen how well Smith can be used in an offense that yeah, if they yeah. use him properly. Because cause that national championship game, most of that goes to Sark because he used oh, yeah. Smith exactly how you want Ohio yeah. State to use Olave or Wilson, how, ever, how Rondale Morris was supposed to be used. So when used properly, we saw the height of his ability. And just before we move on, just let me preface this that – I haven't completed like my final wide receiver rankings yet or anything like that. So I haven't definitively said Smith's better than Chase or Chase better than Smith or Waddle. This is just for fit. This is just for fit. Exactly. I I wouldn't mind if Waddle was the first receiver off the board, depending on which team I wouldn't mind if Smith or if Chase was. And I mean, it was the same thing last year with, I didn't have rugs that high. I was surprised rugs was the first off the board, but it wouldn't have mattered to me if Judy was first or lamb was first or Jefferson. Yep. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm next up. Um, another team I enjoy watching the Carolina Panthers with Matt Rule. Um, so this one's interesting. Uh, they their dream is Micah Parsons slot in uh, where Luke, Luke Keekley was. Um, when it comes to if they didn't want to go quarterback first, uh, Matt Rule I don't think is finished with the defense. But right now I don't think they there there's talent high enough unless you go pay or Rousseau. Uh, but I think you two gross mottos and um, Brian Burns that they're content there and that they need help elsewhere. So you could make an argument for Farley or Sertain uh, opposite Dante Jackson, but it's still Teddy Bridgewater behind, um, at quarterback. I, I assume that perhaps they're going to bring back Kurt, uh, Curtis Samuel. So the offensive system is pretty set. So it comes down to, do you want to add weapons to help out Teddy Bridgewater? In that case, you could have a Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, or Kyle Pitts, who I really like. And right now, I, uh, Ian Thomas is not the answer at, uh, at tight end that they thought he would be. It's also Trey Lance. In that, it's it's a really torn situation, but it's the quarterback position that matters the most and that they're going to need to use. And Trey Lance needs a little bit more time. He needs time to uh, develop in that offense. And if Joe Brady isn't hired away, which it doesn't look like he'll be this cycle, he can work with Trey Lance. So I'm actually going to give them Trey Lance as their quarterback of the future behind Teddy Bridgewater. All right. So now this, I'm on the clock. this is crazy. This is crazy having Chase and Waddle still on the board right now. Oh, yeah. But, I, again, I feel like that's what always happens. It always seems like everyone thinks, oh, this is the year that three receivers are drafted in the top. 12 or 10 or whatever. 
It just but, all depends on how people think of tackles over receivers. That's not what GMs do. They typically don't take those guys, and I think that that's going to stay the same this year. Like, Waddle, Waddle's great, but I don't think he's going to go top 10 just because of the injury. Like, I'd be shocked if Waddle was a top 10 pick. So, yeah, I'm on the clock at nine here with Denver. I think Denver's in a terrible situation. I think Fangio's going to be kind of screwed because they're stuck in mediocrity. And every year that they have this pick, all four quarterbacks are gone right now. So they're not taking Mac Jones here. No. So this will, in my opinion, Fangio's probably going to be gone after this latest year. And they need someone on the defensive side, either edge rusher or cornerback. The corners are better in this class, so I'm going to give them a corner. Similar to the receivers. Any Real quick for people watching, don't yell. We know that Bradley Chubb and Von Miller are uh, a pair. However, Von Miller has a club option and is very expensive. Right. Continue. Sorry, I don't want people yelling at you for that. Yeah, so and similar to the receivers, the three corners are good. And depending on scheme fits, you could take any of them as the top corner. So I'm actually going to give Denver J.C. Horn. Okay. Horn is just a guy who plays with such fire. I loved him in the off season or in the preseason. And he performed really, really well this year. So I was very happy to see that one of the guys I evaluated high had a great year. But I mean, he's just, he's an in your face type of guy. It reminds you a little bit of Jalen Ramsey from a personality standpoint. And then he's a crazy athlete and he's very aware. He's very aware of like routes that receivers are running he's very aware of you know when to peel in zone coverage things like that so i think horn is going to be a great nfl player and i think denver is looking for an identity and i think horn could be a great pick for them gotcha all right so that's been a surprise for me uh, i had him as uh at right now before i get too much into it as a cb3 um behind farley and certain but he's worth I'm not sure if he's worth top 10, but he's definitely at least been round. I have seen him grow on a lot of boards, uh, and I like him a lot. I was hoping he'd be at 26 for the Browns, but that's not happening today. I don't think so. So I'm at 10. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, they have a couple of needs. Um, if it wasn't for them swinging on C.D. Lamb last year, um, I'm sure they would love Jamar Chase right now. Right now, offensively, Kyle Pitts is very intriguing. However, they need help in the secondary. And so this is a fight between Patrick Sertan and Caleb Farley. I think the way that their defense uh, goes right now, I think Sertain is actually a good pick. So I'm going to give him Patrick Sertain. You have your corner. Do something, please. Um, Trayvon Diggs was, was uh, as far as rookie cornerbacks went last year, is pretty good. Uh, everyone just needs time. And I think putting him back with former teammate, Patrick Sertain, you have your cornerbacks, be better. Let Dak do his thing, bring him back, and um, and someone take advantage of that weak, weak division. Yeah, I like that for the Cowboys, and I love Sertain as well. All right, so I'm on the clock at 11 here with the Giants. Before I make this pick, let's hear a quick word from our sponsors. The following broadcast is brought to you in association by XP Coffee Company. XP Coffee Company is the fresh brewed coffee made for gamers by gamers. Get amazing flavors like Choco Loco in 8, 12, or 16 ounce bags. Or level up and get illusion, isolation, nightmare, or the majestic throne blends in light, medium, or dark roast in whole bean. Coarse French press, drip, or fine espresso in 12 ounce, 16 ounce, or 2 pound bags. Wow! Shipping worldwide. If you're in the U.S., go to usa.xpcoffee.co. If you're in Europe or in the U.K., go to www.xpcoffee.co. XP Coffee Company. For gamers, by gamers. All right, so we're back on the clock here with the New York Giants at pick 11. The Giants were one game away from the playoffs, regardless of however you want to put it with the NFC East. Their defense played great at the end of the year. So I'm going to give them a receiver. I'm going to give them Jamar Chase. I think Chase would be a great pairing for Daniel Jones, give him a great young weapon. And, you know, let's see if the 
Giants can make some noise in the NFC East next year. Yep. Um, all Giants fans celebrate with you. I'm going to give uh, San Francisco a reason to celebrate, and that's with Jalen Waddle. It's for them, it would be spectacular if this is their situation to add more speed. You already have Debo Samuel. You already have Brandon Ayuk. And, uh, pairing him with Kittle is just weapons on weapons on weapons. Whether Jimmy G is there next year, whether they go in the second round for, uh, for someone or they trade for Watson, I think Jan- Jalen Waddle is going to be an accessory in that offense. Wow. You got Debo Samuel and, and Brandon Ayuk and Jalen Waddle now. That'd be – That'd be an interesting offense to watch. And Kendrick Bourne, Eastern Washington, don't forget him. True. And um, Richie James, too. Mm -hmm. All right, the 13, Los Angeles Chargers had a great season with Justin Herbert. Maybe not a great season overall, but their rookie quarterback played well. So let's give them someone to protect the rookie quarterback. I'm going to go with my third-ranked offensive tackle, so we're going to keep it in order. Rashawn Slater out of Northwestern. He played great in his season the previous year in 2019. He opted out of 2020. His tape was amazing against Chase Young. That's something I went over a little bit during the summer, which is why I've I've had him high since I saw that. Slater can play all five positions is what I'm hearing. I know he hasn't played all five positions in college yet. It's mainly just because he's he's 6'3", and people are worried about his arm length. Yeah, which is uh, why they can kick him in the guard if need be, and center. I don't believe he's played center no. in college, but the belief is he could be like El- Elton Jenkins of Green Bay and yeah. kind of all five positions, which would be amazing for Los Angeles, who needs probably at least two guys on that offensive line. Yeah, and I was trading Russell Okun, um last year that – Whatever your take, I think it was actually smart to get rid of that contract. Um, so I'm up with uh, Minnesota. It's a never-ending quest for someone opposite Neil Hunter. And here you have a good situation of the top two. Um, your pick of edges. Um, or you can go with Caleb Farley um, and kind of strengthen in that the secondary. There's not a safety high enough right now, and I think Anthony Harris is going to get himself priced out of re-signing with them unless they do a franchise tag. But for uh, that reason, I'm going to go to the edge. I'm going to give them Gregory Rousseau, who's an absolute lanky freak, and um, I think he'd be a good complement with Hunter. He's raw. He still needs time. He opted out. Uh, so hopefully he's worked on his technique a little bit more, but not seeing it on film kind of hurts. But I think him and Daniil Hunter, that's absolutely a devastating combo in the future. All right. So I'm on the clock here, pick 15, New England Patriots. I'm going to go the easy route here. I'm going to give him Kyle Pitts. You jerk. How dare you? How dare you? It's hard to deny. As a Dolphins that- fan? insane ability just to make plays on the ball (laughs) just what Kyle Pitts is um he's a huge receiver and the comparisons to Darren Waller while they're valid I think he could be better than Darren Waller so he'd be a guy and this is a hot take so this is another one I would consider him as the first pass catcher off the board I think Pitts is that good and I think he could bring that much of an impact onto an NFL team. And I know the positional value will n- likely not make that happen. And I get that receivers are more valuable than tight ends, but Pitts is, Pitts is a different, he's a different kind of receiver. receiver. He's a, he's a wide receiver. Essentially. He is just a really good slot. Um, how also just in general, how dare you as a Dolphins fan? And like, um, let's not underestimate his blocking too. Pitts is a pretty good blocker. His blocking is good. Um, his utilization in the slot uh, at Florida was very good. All right, uh, so I'm up with the Cardinals. Um, the weapons have been taken away, so no more weapons for Kyle Murray. I think it's a bit too high for someone like Bateman. Um, uh, Bateman, Pitts is gone. Pitts would have been a very nice compliment, uh, supplementing for where Larry Fitzgerald was. Um, but if they're going to let Pat Pete walk – this is actually a fantastic opportunity for Caleb Farley. And Caleb yeah. Farley should not still be on the board. But here he is, and he's off the board now. Caleb Farley, Farley as um, your physical 
physical big corner um, that's going to be needed with players like DK Metcalf uh, in that division. So Cardinals get D. Uh, <laughs> that would have been nice. Um, they get Caleb Farley. Yeah, and I know there's people who love Caleb Farley, so I'm just going to say I'm sorry to you guys. I haven't really watched him yet. I haven't scouted him yet. He was an opt-out, so it was hard to. So, right. So, I haven't really given him a full evaluation yet. Maybe he could have been my pick at nine for Denver had I seen him. But I really I'm going to I'm going to preface this next pick. I have only seen, like, two players be mocked to them. And it's mainly just one guy to the Raiders. So, I'm interested to see who you're going to pick. For the Raiders here, their defense is just atrocious, in my opinion. I think a lot of the good defenders are already off the board. And I think it's too early to take another linebacker. And the fact that Quiddy Pay is still on the board is kind of surprising. I don't know if you saw some of the clips that were trending yesterday, but I mean, he's a freak, freak athlete. And he produced in the few games he played this year, he produced for Michigan. So I'm going to give the Raiders Quiddy Pay line him up alongside of um, Max Crosby over Cleveland Farrell probably. So I think it'll be, it'll be interesting who they have because Max Crosby took a little bit of a down year uh, in comparison to his rookie year. Um, But you did go off the beaten path because I have only, I have mainly seen one player get mocked to them and that's usually his four. And that was uh, Ousa Koromoa. Yeah. That's what, that's what I was thinking too. That's mainly what I've seen. Um, so all the, the tackles have been taken off. Actually, no, you already uh, took care of that with another three pick. So if you need a receiver, you need receiving talent, and the Dolphins do at 18. There's only a player, maybe two, who are even uh, entertaining uh, as an offensive weapon. This is also one of those spots where people will bang the table who saw the national championship for Najee Harris. It's just a little bit too high. It's a little bit too high for uh, for someone who didn't just dominate every single game. Agreed, yep. Um, so it's close. If they were picking at 25, more of an argument. Right. But right now they need someone to catch the ball, someone who can get themselves open and body up receivers uh, it, um, against Stephon Gilmore and Shadavius White. And for that reason, not the biggest fan. I just think it's a really good fit. It's Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota. Um, I'm fine with any receiver, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> any receiver, in my opinion, would come in and be our number one had yeah. if we take them in the first round. Yeah. And in the second round, you can still get a Javonta Williams. Uh, you can still get a possibly Travis uh, each right. if if and that's we got, two picks. we got two picks in the second as well. So so it's something to work with. Or try Bateman, you just need someone who can go up and get it um, and can body up uh, on corners. All right. On the clock at 19, the Washington football team, another tough spot here. They're not going to do anything without a quarterback. But I just, I'm not picking Mac Jones in the first round still. Well, maybe not, not in the first round, but not at 19. How dare they make the playoffs? Corner. Corner's in need, but I don't know if I like any of these guys in the first round. Maybe the one of the two guys from Georgia will go first round, either Tyson Campbell or Eric Stokes. So I'm going to give them a receiver to put alongside of Terry McLaurin, and I'm going to give them a guy who I really like, who you mentioned earlier is Rondell Moore. I think he's getting a little – He's not getting as much love as he deserves. I mean, this is a guy who, when he's on the field at Purdue, all eyes are on him on the defense. And the fact that he can still put together some solid games is so impressive. And you, as an Ohio State fan, I know you definitely saw yes. how he played two years ago. I mean, oh, that, yes. that play where he broke like seven tackles or whatever, I mean, that's sick. A guy that size can be that physical and as well as that shifty and elusive. I think he's a perfect complement to – not only Terry McLaurin, but also Antonio Gibson and J.D. McKissick. I mean, that's almost like a third receiving back on that team, and that's going to make it so difficult to defend those guys. 
So I think that'd yeah. be a really cool pick. Would be more. He he, he he is an ultimate gadget player uh, pick. It just depends whether he can back up the play from two years ago because he's had injuries, CL in, injuries. Uh, right. The, uh, the screenings go for him. Um, but yeah, he's definitely an exciting weapon. It's just you are banking on that potential and how to use him because Purdue didn't use him outside at all, yeah. which you understand because you want him as close to the ball as possible. And I mean, they have David Bell, another receiver as well. Yeah. All right. So before you give this Chicago pick, let's just hear another quick word from our sponsors. Oh, I might have to give Indianapolis Mac Jones. You don't believe in Jacob Eason? No. No, I don't. Wow. Uh, I think they'll go – like, it's it's weird because you forget, like, Jameis Winston is still out there, and I doubt he's going to come back uh, to the Saints. It's yeah, weird because you think of all like the backups fun. that are just kind of chilling around. Yeah. All right, whenever you're ready. Very good. All right. Let's hear from Matt, who's on the clock at 20 with Chicago. Okay. So, at 20, um, they seem committed to having Trubisky come back and fold his contract. You just can't do much with it right now. Um, so, I think for quarterback, they're going to try and ride it out and see what happens. Plus, it's, it's Matt Nagy, uh, Nagy and Ryan Pace's uh, game. So, they're going to live and die by uh, those two quarterbacks. So I think they're going to stay put. All the tackles that I think would be worthy of the spot have been taken off. You could talk about uh, Alex Leatherwood or Vera Tucker. I just think it's a little bit too high for them. But I really like, if you want to go to the defensive route, I like the combo of Christian Barmore and Akeem Hicks. I think that is a nasty combo, and no one's going to be running on them, which is very crucial because Aaron Jones in that, in that division. So And Dalvin Cook. So I'm going to give them Christian Barr more solidify that front and dominate lines. That's an interesting one, yeah. All right, at 21, Indianapolis, they have lost their quarterback in Phillip Rivers, who just retired. They got right now Bris- Jacoby Brissett, who I believe is a free agent, and Jacob Eason, who no one believes will be a starting quarterback. So they can go a couple routes – Unfortunately, we can't predict what they're going to do in free agency. So assuming they don't get a quarterback in free agency, I'm going to give them Mac Jones here. And even if they get a quarterback in free agency, you know, who knows? They can still take a swing on Mac Jones. Jones, I know I'd said I don't necessarily love him in the first round, but the quarterbacks behind him are not going to be starting quarterbacks in the NFL. And Jones, you know, at least he has – the, f- the floor, I wouldn't say the ceiling, but he has the floor to be, you know, a capable starter. I don't think he'll be anything special, which is why I wouldn't necessarily look at him in the first round. But the Colts are in desperate need of a quarterback because that's a football team that – That is a playoff team that just needs – just just manage them, I give the that. ball to Jonathan Taylor. If it wasn't for that, this is a completely different pick. If they're not a playoff roster, this is a completely different pick. Exactly. That's a team that they're contenders with a good quarterback. I mean, if they get Watson, that'd be them and the Chiefs and the Bills if they get Watson. The Browns? All right. All right, so I'm up at 22 with with the Tennessee Titans. Um, This is a part where edge rushers, because it didn't really work out, I believe it was uh, Vic Beasley and uh, if – uh, and Jadavion Clowney didn't really work out. They're going to go. Don't think they're going to keep them around. I believe they uh, had zero sacks. Yeah, it was not a good uh, scenario for their uh, edge rushing. Um, so this is the part where you talk about the potential of a Jason Owe or Z, uh, Ojolari. Um, if you did not take JC Hoare, this would be a great uh, horn. That would be a great spot for him. But this is also where you can start talking about players uh, like Wyatt Davis on the interior to help out that line even further. But right now, they need edge rushers quite desperately. Um, and if you want to go on the potential or on the physical tools that Mike Reeble likes to work with, Jason Owe is a great fit. And I, it's hard because I'm not personally the biggest fan of Owe. 
but I know all the physical tools are there. He just needs to be provided with them. And that the defense, defensive scheme right there is going to be used for his, um, for his benefit. So I'm going to give him Jason Owe. All right. Now 23, we got the Jets already taking Zach Wilson. This is a pick from Seattle in the Jamal Adams trade. So for them, they can go a number of routes, but they have the draft capital in the later rounds to focus on the skill player and the skill positions. So I'm actually going to give them a name that we've floated around for a little bit is Elijah Vera Tucker from USC. He played left tackle this year. He played, I believe it was left guard. No, he was a guard. I believe he played left guard the year before. He plays offensive line. That's all that matters. He looked great as a tackle this year. And um, um, I had watched him a little bit. The game against UCLA, he was very impressive in that game. I've watched that game. Um, The strength he has and, you know, just the agility, the lateral agility on the tackle side, that's impressive for someone who they think is going to be a guard. And, I mean, he's got the strength to do it. So I think Barrett Tucker is going to be a very capable offensive lineman in the league. And the Jets are going to get a good one there at 23. Yeah, it's very interesting. The only thing for him is that he needs to get a little bit stronger because Kayvon Thibodeau, had a good time in the, uh, in the uh, Pet 12 championship game. He's, if you don't know the name already, in came on uh, Thibodeau. Oh, yeah. It's top five next year. Yeah. Dude's insane. He's been insane. He's going to destroy people <laughs> next year. Uh, okay, so that leaves me to Pittsburgh. I have two picks that finally make sense because, God, they need it. Um, this was a possibility. I don't think they're going to – in their minds, it would be disrespect and go for a quarterback. Mac Jones would be a possibility. They probably should because he's so efficient. Now, we'll see later on if that's just the offensive weapons he had at Bama. But it's something to discuss if he was available. However, right now, there are two fits right now. They need Edmonds out from safety. So, you could definitely look at Trayvon Morig. I think it uh, would be a, a solid fit for him. There is also um, – pardon me, the idea of Najee Harris. A running back makes that offense so much better. James Conner was not making that happen against the Browns. That should tell you something, and I know that that, uh, that's not a good sign. So this is... This is tough, because Najee Harris in this offense, I think, would be a lot better for them. But people were screaming about Edmonds. If I'm, I'll, I'll give him Trayvon Morig, the safety out of TCU, um, just because they need Edmonds out and they need help in that secondary, and safety is a good way to, co- to cover the bases. Um, so we had two for one. Edmonds no more, and you get uh, the top safety in the class. Yeah, I think as of right now, Morig's the clear cut number one ranked safety in the class. So, But do not discount the Najee Harris discussion. He should be an argument for Pittsburgh specifically, Pittsburgh um, and a couple of the teams. But that's the one that changes their offense the most, un- unless they trade up, which never happens for a quarterback. Yeah, I agree. But also, I mean, you got to look at the Steelers' offensive line as well. Wyatt Davis is also in contention, him, Sam Cosme. Um, because Villanueva is starting to show signs of, um, of decay. DeCastro's been fi- uh, fine recently, um, but Wyatt Davis would be the top guard in that situation, or Vera Tucker, who you just had. So offensive line is also a need, but so many people complaining about Edmonds and his play. All right. At 25, I'm on the clock with the Jacksonville Jaguars, already having taken Trevor Lawrence. So this is this is one where Urban Myers – obviously going to get his say. And I think he's going to want to go with that young upside. They need offensive line if Cam Robinson, the left tackle, leaves, which I think he will. But I don't know if there's a guy that I would love to take and slot him in as my day one starting left tackle, besides maybe Alex Leatherwood. They could use help in the defensive – in the secondary – but again, other than Tyson Campbell and Eric Stokes, I don't know if I'd like any corners in the first. So while this may not be a position of need, it's such high upside. I'm going to give them Aziz Ojolari, 
put him right alongside of Josh Allen. They'll both rush on the opposite sides and Miles Jack. I think that linebacker core, that'd be really tough to stop. You got your two outside linebackers in Aziz Ojolari and Josh Allen, and then your middle linebacker in Miles Jack. That'd be something for Jacksonville. So Ojolari at 25. Gotcha. I think it'll be very interesting, especially if uh, if they do look to add for receiving a cup, Kadarius Tony could be um, his favorite weapon from Percy Harvin, his favorite speed threat along with DJ Chark. Um, that could be up for discussion. But yeah, the, the line's a bit odd right now how the board has fallen for them. All right. My endearing, finally winning Cleveland Browns. I hate this board. I hate it so much. It's all my, all the people that I liked are uh, are now gone. Yeah, they need corners desperately. Uh, Greedy Williams will be back. He's for, he has been forgotten because he had nerve issue in his shoulder. He will be back, hopefully better than how he played his rookie year. Denzel Ward will be healthy. Um, Grant Delpit and Ronnie Harrison or Ronnie Harrison are going to take over the safeties. And I liked Carl Joseph. Hopefully, they can take him back. I don't think linebacker was as big of an issue as people thought. You could get a Chaz Surrett in the back, in the in the mid back end of the second round, possibly. So I think if Christian Barmore was here, um, they need an edge. I don't like Carlos Basham that much, but you just need playmakers on defense. You need people who can get the ball, who can go find Lamar Jackson and take him down. And I think the player right now. It's tough because it goes up to Zayvon Collins, who could cover Mark Andrews um, and has the athletic freak nature to cover anyone. Or you get a uh, Wus Koromoa from Notre Dame. And right now, just from the big-time nature of winning football, that the culture that they're trying to build in Cleveland, it's tough. Uh, He's undersized. You know what? I'm I'm just going to do it. Zayvon Collins. Give me Zayvon Collins. I want big nature. I want a guy who can possibly fill the bolt, the, uh, the mold of uh, Edmonds, the linebacker from Buffalo. Just someone who can go downhill, smash someone, and cover. Um, Uzi Koromoro should be off the board right now, but I just don't like the fit. I want physicality, and I want big, uh, a big linebacker. So right. Zayvon Collins for the Browns. Buckets award winner to the Browns at 27. This, right, this changes at all if there's any cornerback worthy of the pick. But yeah. So 27, I'm on the clock with Baltimore. Baltimore needs an X receiver. Their X receiver, their two X receivers in this playoffs, Willie Sneed and Des Bryant. So they need an X. They need a guy on the end who's going to go up and get the ball. They need a guy who's going to, you know, be a good pairing for – Marquise Brown, who looks great some games and awful others. But he's still there for at least two more years, so they could work with that. So I'm going to give them Terrence Marshall from LSU. He was the third option on that championship team in 2019, and he produced that year as well. And then this past year, he only played in, I believe, six games, and he almost totaled 1,000 yards in a team with just rotating quarterbacks. He was the only consistent piece on that offense. Terrence Marshall is a great player, and I think he's worthy of some first-round talk, and I think he'd help Baltimore a lot. So you like him over St. Brown? Over who? Um, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown from USC? Uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm up at 28. Um for this, so this is New Orleans Saints. A lot of people taken off the board for them. Um, they are in caps out. They are in cap hell. They are going to need a ton of help, trading a ton of pieces, shedding a lot of weight. This is going to be a dramatically different team when it comes March. They're going to do a lot of sci- uh, a lot of releases, cuts, trades. They're expected to be over a hundred million dollars over the cap, and Drew Brees retires. I think they said it was almost 30 or more than 30 of dead cap, 30 mil. This would be a great landing spot if Mac Jones was on the board because the cheapest position you'd like at this point would be quarterback, and I think he was very efficient. But that's not the case right now. So this is going to be an entirely different team. 
it's tough. This is a very tough one because you do not know how this team is going to look like afterwards. Um, but if that's the case, I'm going to give uh, best player on the board, and this should be Owusu Koromora. So Jeremiah Owusu Koromora, the athletic nature at linebacker. Um, De- Demario Davis has been great for them. Uh, he might be a part of that ca- uh, that cap shed. He has a good. He has a solid number for him. Uh, Quan Alexander, whether he's back or not, the is best player, and I think he's uh, the best one on the board. It's just a really, really tough spot for them, and they're going to look very. They're going to look dramatically different. Yeah, I agree. There, that's almost a team that you wouldn't want to land on in the back end. Yeah. of the first round based on what's going on with them, but. And linebackers need the time to develop, especially in that system for them. Um, and if Demario Davis stays, that's a great uh, mentor to learn from. All right, so at 29, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Before I make that pick, let's hear a word discussing the Vendetta Sports Media Patreon. Hey, you. Yeah, you. In case you hadn't heard, your favorite renegade sports media group has its own Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash vendetta sports media to support our efforts to continuously bring you sports, gaming, and other media coverage as only we can. We've got four different membership tiers. For $3 a month, we'll give you a simple thank you on our Patreon site. For $6 a month, you get a thank you and you get to become a recruit in Jackson Law's Vendetta University Gaming Series. For $10 a month, you get everything from the previous tiers, a special thank you at the end of our videos, free access to our upcoming Discord chat, and a free koozie after four months. And then the big dog, $50 a month, gets you everything from the previous tiers, as well as opportunities for Fantasy League invites, stream gaming, possible invites to mock NFL and NBA draft sessions, a once a month Google Hangout, and after four months, a free t-shirt. Yeah! Go to patreon.com forward slash vendetta sports media and help us to improve our pledge to bring you the best sports gaming and other media coverage. All right. So at 29, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on the clock. Now this is a team. This is a very good team. I don't think they have very many needs on offense. Maybe you could suggest the receiver because Godwin's a free agent. And then their secondary is young and good. So for me, I think it's going to be in the front seven on defense. You got Shaquille Barrett, who is a free agent, I believe. And will get paid. Right. And um, Jason Pierre-Paul's getting older, and Dominican Sue's getting older. So I'm going to give them someone on the edge. And having not watched all these guys, Joseph Osai is a guy I really like. Um, and then I'm not really a big fan of many of these other guys. Maybe Jalen Phillips from Miami. I love Osai's length and his motor. But someone who I'm a big fan of is Jordan Smith from UAB. So let's give them Jordan Smith at 29. Um, Jordan's a great guy. Also check out the podcast interview. Shameless plug. Him. Yep, he's a great guy. And he's going to show out at the Senior Bowl. I can promise you that. I've watched a lot of him. He was a guy who I really wanted to get on the podcast because he was someone that I really liked and I felt not a lot of people were talking about. And I'm very thankful that he came on the podcast to talk with us. This is going to be a name who's going to rise and it's going to start next week with the senior bowl. And I would not be surprised if he comes in at the end of the first round. Like, let's not forget. He was a, he was a three-star recruit going to Florida in 2016. So they thought of him as a, very good player, and he still is. And I think he's being forgotten about. I know um, Dan Brugler said something about him that he's thought of very highly in and, um, NFL GM rooms. So let's get him at Tampa Bay with 29. Okay. So I'm up at 30 with the Bills. Um, Right now, they just need help on the offensive line. Uh, most of the first round tackles have been taken. This is an argument where you could have Cos- um, Sam Cosme, Alex Leatherwood, um, including Wyatt Davis at guard. Um, but I think if you do want to bookend with uh, Deion Dawkins at left tackle, Tevin Jenkins is a physical right tackle. And I think if they do get their running back in the later rounds, 
if they got an Najee Harris, which is a terrifying thought. Um, but I'm going to give them Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State, a like physical that. road raider of right tackle, and he only gave, gave up four pressures all year. He's a guy who a lot of people focus on the left tackles, but he's a great right tackle. So Yeah, and I think that uh, in their scenario, he will work. Alex Leatherwood also used for two years in the scenario of essentially a flipped right tackle. He was working at um, – on the front end spot of Tua Tago Viola. Viola. Um, so if you wanted to make that comparison, he's also used to playing the the run edge side. But in this case, I think Tevin Jenkins would be the pick. Yeah, and I I'm a big fan of Deion Dawkins at the left tackle. So he he was he was putting in some work last week. He looked good last week. Yeah. All right, on the clock at 31. This will be my final pick with the Green Bay Packers. There's probably two glaring needs for them maybe three i would say linebacker is one receiver and then corner um the receivers on the board Kadarius tony i almost want to leave him just to see if you're going to take him with the chiefs um i am not however i will say this pick was altered by olave's decision to come back because right. this would have been absolutely perfect i would love olave to green bay and i i'm pretty sure in my Previous mock draft on Christmas. I'm pretty sure I had Olave here. I know it, it's I here. It, it would have been perfect, um, but unfortunately, damn for me, that's not the case. I get another year with them. Yeah. Um, I'm actually not going to give them a receiver. I think there's still it's the same thing every year. We're going to piss off Aaron Rodgers again. We get another year pissed off Rodgers. They could get great receivers though in the second and third rounds. Just, like, just give him a quarterback and piss him off more. Give him Kyle Trask. Yeah, that was questionable last year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. I like the other corner better. I like Stokes better as a player, but I think in terms of athletic upside, Tyson Campbell. So I feel like he's gonna end up being drafted before Eric Stokes. Yeah, athlete. So I'm gonna give Campbell to Green Bay. Okay. All right. So I am at final pick, which is the Kansas City Chiefs. They have some gaps, however, it is overcame by their wonderful uh, quarterback um, and the return of C E H. However, um. I think it's going to be interesting on the return of Laurent uh, Duvernay Tardif. He also might just not come back because of everything that's going on with his uh, his professional situation. So this could be guard Wyatt Davis, which I think would be a great fit, or it could be this ultra productive Nick Bolton from Missouri to try and help out the um, the front seven with linebackers. I think he's worth the talent. I think Wyatt Davis is worth the talent. It just depends on what you need. However. What people will always say is their downfall um, is that, sure, their offense can keep scoring, but can their defense – if they can, they have one misstep without their defense having issues. So I'm going to give them the linebacker and Nick Bolton so they can stop the run. They were very poor at stopping the run this year. And Nick Bolton, I believe, will help that as well. So Nick Bolton as a 32th pick. Yeah, but, Wyatt, but Wyatt Davis should certainly be in the conversation. Right, but, I mean, again, there are some injury concerns there. I love Nick Bolton. I have him as my second-ranked linebacker as of right now. I saw some talks about him going to be running a terrible 40 time. Someone was, like, talking about, like, 4-7, 4-8. From what I've seen on tape, I think he's going to run in the 4-5s, maybe early or high 4-6s or low 4-6s. So I'm a big fan of Nick Bolton, and I like that pick. So that's going to wrap it up. For this 2021 NFL mock draft, I'm Jeremy Rinaldi. And then that was Matt Robertshaw. Let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree with some of our picks. Subscribe to the Vendetta Sports Media YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter. We are 50 followers away from 1,000. So every follow counts and every follow helps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.